Hey, welcome back to the What If Universe's uh, interviewing uh, What If content career slash podcast slash whatever this is at this point. But anyways, I have brought back uh, Crown Fiend because he's doing his uh, comeback thing. So uh, for those of you who haven't seen the previous episode, I would recommend it if you want further context. But would you like to give a brief summary of what's been going on uh yeah so basically before my channel was even a year i decided like i was just dead to it so i decided to quit doing that try doing some other things and i learned a lot from that and now i'm back and it's really just thanks to like two people that i'm even back in the first place but um i've been trying to get my channel back on track now because i was like a, over a year gone so for all intents and purposes i did quit but yeah i just decided to come back thanks to some pushing from uh two two important people uh I assume you don't want to name the people because you're oh, keep it private. I'm I'm fine with it. Um, one of them was my wife. Definitely, my wife uh, definitely played a big part in that because she was like, you know, that's what you used to do, and you still think of stuff like that. So why not do it? But the first person who got uh, who was bringing me back was uh, he's a smaller YouTuber. And uh, he's taking a break right now himself, but he's, you know, about to be uploading again. And that is uh, Explic, Explic What Ifs. That dude is a good friend of mine now, after knowing him for about over a year. And I helped him with uh, some of his content. But he hit me up and after he watched the first video, actually, because he was just like, Yo, what happened to you? And uh, it just something about the interaction we had it just clicked and i started uh getting back into it and then uh, he's like dude if you're tired of mha you know there's these coming up and we were talking about stuff that we were watching anyways and chainsaw man came up and i was like yeah chainsaw man that's that might be the way back to do it and to this day it's like i'm just this year wrapping up every deku focus thing and then that that's over and that will be the biggest source of just contention and dread out of the way and i'll be able to do a lot better going forward so it's honestly just thanks to explic and my wife i do want to bring something up to the fans of the show uh so your fans who contacted me a while back curious about the comeback thing the thing is like when a content creator is coming back and someone tells me privately it's not my business to release anything like there's several content creators i know who quit or taking a hiatus or whatever it's not my business like that's just how things go sometimes it's like the important thing to remember is like if you care about someone it's good to remain in contact with them because i'm more of like a news type person it's not I'm not the main source for things. Just want to make sure people from this point get where I'm coming from. Because I haven't said, because a situation like this hasn't really happened for the show here. So I might as well just bring that up real quick. Yeah, go, go right ahead, man. But I did want to talk a bit about uh, what made you feel a bit obligated to continue some of the stuff you're doing because i know some people like and myself like i'm more complicit into choosing what i'm planning to move over to like anime sages channel for this channel merger to figure out what's worth continuing what's like staying with my channel because this is a whole different process i've been dealing with so i had been uploading what ifs on this channel here but what made you come to that decision, I guess, is what I'm saying? So, a lot of it was just talking with Explic. Me and him would just talk for, like, hours, and it's just uh, the two of us, and we would go over a lot of my old series, because he did start off as, like, a fan before he even made a what-if, 
and he was like, dude, this series was good and that, but why didn't you finish this? And I was really had to think about it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, no, that's right. I did have a good idea for that. Um, and some series we talked out like an outline on how I could continue on with it or nothing like that. Like I said, Explict helped out a lot and he is the main force as to why I am back today. So if it hadn't been for him, like, I don't think I'd ever continue anything at all, but a lot of it is just bouncing ideas off each other. And that's honestly just how it happened. It was not something that was planned, not something that was even a thought in my head until I just started chatting about it. And then Golden, uh, Golden Woodus came in and we talked about it with him as well. And the three of us together just uh, found that if we helped each other out, everything would go more smoothly and we could help keep each other like inspired and bounce ideas off and discard what's not needed and go with what is needed and a lot of them like explic to this day i still have him uh proofread some of my scripts and he'll point out certain ideas that you know he thinks would be a little bit too much so he has also helped like rein me in a little bit i'm not as extreme but the extreme stuff is uh still something i plan to do just not to the same extent as before That's that's understandable. You gotta have like a good a balance to things when it comes to production, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, because I see a lot of people lately, as far as doing what ifs. A lot of people feel like they need to rush something or try to do something in one take. When if you really consider going slow, like if you actually care about the story, then it's really better just pace yourself at that point because otherwise it's like what's the point of you just sloppily trying to talk about something when you could like read like a fanfic and just credit the person add something to community here there's so much stuff that's not archived and like what recently would happen with archive of our own basically being like ddos like that was a, its own a uh, crazy fiasco that's going on it's like that's one thing that i've been considering it's like where's stuff go if like like fanfiction.net or archive our own just disappears one day that's one thing that i think about yeah a exactly um but yeah because you've been on the internet for a while like there's a ton of like wikis that disappear oh, in a lot of different like forum websites that Absolutely. No longer exists. <laughs> like, I mean, like, Kiss Anime, that, that's pretty much evaporated. Like, I mean, just gone. I think, I think piracy is different from that. Oh, still. yeah, I know. I'm just saying. It's like a, an example, a poor example, I, but still. It's like everything changes because the in internet is ever changing. It's like. I guess to just, be fair, there was a comment section on Kiss Anime, if I remember. There was. Yes, yeah, so all that's gone, technically. Yeah, and... Uh, just... Things are not forever on the internet. Eventually, they will disappear. But it's always interesting to think, okay, where will it go after that? I think my thing is more like, if you care about something and want to stay around, like you need to save it, because you have no control it will happen like i remember like a youtuber recently who like he passed away a while ago but his wife i believe had to delete his entire channel because people are using his voice to make an ai and she didn't find that appropriate so it's like crazy yeah. thing. the whole entire history of this guy who was like hundred thousand subscribers like like decent celebrity back in his day and all of his stuff's like gone like anyone who was like a fan of his stuff like yeah. that's crazy to think about and that, that's a really sad story like it, it shouldn't have even had to come to that in all honesty but it's just that that did happen is crazy I mean if someone's making 
like a replicated voice of like a deceased person that you care about, I kind of understand the reasoning behind it, but at the same time, there's consequences to what happened to that. So, absolutely, it is what it is. I did want to ask you with how you feel with the recent uh, AI uprising that's been happening in the WEF community, because literally we've reached a point where. Not only stuff's voiced by a robot, but now stuff's also written by a robot from stuff that I've gone through. It's just nuts. <laughs> I think if it's like a though. one-off, a one-off video, like having this AI write this out here, yeah, just like a kind of a funny thing, like how I think it was Carthew, right? He he was the one that did that and just like made a good fun video out of it, like nothing that you're supposed to take too seriously. I think that's fine, but what I think is really just pretty lazy, and I mean, I didn't even know most of this stuff was happening until uh, Golden and you brought it up to me, because I don't pay attention to the community anymore, like, whatsoever, but if you're going to use the AI voice, at least write your own stories, because I get it, not everybody is comfortable using their own voice, and that's understandable, just find one that's bearable right but make sure you're having some creativity with it make sure that it's your story not anybody else's or stuff like that that's pretty much my stance from it now if it's just like you're having the ai write it having the ai voice it I, i'm not really sure how i feel about that because the ai can only write so much of what you put in there and like what you give it the basis for so at the same time it's somewhat creative but i just i guess i'm kind of neutral on the whole thing yeah because when stuff like this was first starring it was just fan fiction just retitled as what ifs being read and now we're reaching a point where i guess you could call it original but at the same time it's data that's scraped from other stuff so technically it's not Right. In hindsight. Like, it's a very big. It's a slippery uh, slope. Thing. Yeah, I'm definitely planning this year to talk more people about this because I do see recent effects. Like, even with the uh, art, like people in like Sage of Sir, we, we fi we're finding thumbnails that aren't original art. It's just AI generated. And it's just nuts with uh, what's going on with that. Yeah, no. I mean, that's just... Uh, as someone who does pay for his own art, I feel like that's just kind of cheating in a way. But that's probably just my own bias on there. But I know it takes other people's art and collectively like just scrapes them together to generate what kind of looks like what you would want it to be. And that's kind of a, a moral issue where I'm like... I feel like I have a slight problem with it, but I'm not an artist. Like that's something that I can say I'm personally never going to use. And that's all I can really speak to. Yeah. I, I remember a while back, like, uh, someone brought to me, it's like, how are people going to tell, like, isn't it going to get relatively confusing as well? And I think that's one thing that should be considered as well. It's like, it's not good to outright accuse people either, but I think if there's like no credit for a thing, if there's like uh, no link back to where something sourced from, you can probably make an assumption that, yeah, it was probably stolen. Most probably. Likely. Now, the other case, someone could just steal fan art. That's the other <laughs> case. Oh, absolutely. That terrible. happens. That happens a lot. Yeah, that's why I, I mainly just switched to getting my art drawn for me. Because I have like two people that I, I use Fiverr. Like for anybody that's out there, like Fiverr is such a great tool for content creators because everything there is freelanced. And if you just look hard enough, you could find something affordable in every price range. And so that's a tool that um, I have just been using. It is a great asset to me whenever I don't have 
a whole lot of time or I want something to look really good. Like I don't have to go to like Twitter and find artists that way, which thank thankfully I don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kinda cool to think about. Yeah. So you say, yeah, you commission your stuff. You don't do it yourself. That's what you said. No, uh, the thumbnails I make myself, but um, for art and that I just, I commission it. And it's, I roughly pay about 15 to $20, depending on which character it is. Because <laughs> I know the Black Clover art that I get is 20. Same with Chainsaw Man. But the uh, Naruto and MHA stuff is like fifteen dollars a piece. Yeah, it also depends if you switched artists or whatever. It's it is uh, what it is. Yeah, but for me, it's like uh, I I just have two. I have um, two of them, and they're pretty good. Oh, yeah, one thing I haven't brought up yet is that uh, recently you've became one of the main people to do thumbnails for uh, Anime Sage. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. That, that Sage is a, a great dude. and um, It's like... I can... think of a good way to say this. It's just I been see. a fun time. It's just been a fun time. Because Sage is super down-to-earth, and he's easy to work with. So, as a thumbnail artist having someone that's easy to work with and easy going and isn't like super just like aggressive or like telling you, Hey man, this is just absolute crap or whatever. Like this, like what is wrong with this? Like, you know, just suggestions or being like, Hey, no, can you change this? Or that looks good. Maybe a little bit more like this, like, like you and Sage, cause you guys are probably the easiest people. Besides Golden and Explic that I've worked with on thumbnail designs. Yeah, I think with Sage, myself, we're more open to being a bit more experimental at the moment. Because we're just seeing where stuff goes at this point. And... Oh, absolutely. And, like, even right now, like, my my style always... I'm always looking to evolve it. But I take inspiration from a lot of things. And one of the biggest inspirations for my new current set of thumbnails has been Spider-Verse. Like, the Into the Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse. And just, like, the whole comic book aesthetic. That has been some of my biggest sources of inspiration. Yeah, that's one thing that I like with the design, for sure. Like, incorporating that aesthetic to the thumbnails like i'm sure other people probably do it but some that it was more of a first for me as far as uh in this genre oh yeah absolutely um it just happens because i'm more of a comic book fan than an anime fan nowadays i think i'm also drifting a little bit towards that because i have been a bit stagnant in the uh, with some stuff, because when you're someone who watches stuff dubbed, there's certain things that don't get released immediately. <laughs> like, so yeah. you can't follow s seasonal stuff at all. Like, yeah. uh, there's that one where it's basically, uh, it's kind of like uh, Mario Golf, but with like two anime women, <laughs> and like, oh, there's two no. seasons of this thing. But there's like, there's no dub for it. It's like, Oh, it seems like a cool show. There's like a mafia thing. Like there's like crazy shots they have to do. Like it's like a sports anime. I actually want to kind of watch for once. And there's no way of yeah. watching. That's that's always like the the downfall for it. But the stuff is like for me. I'm definitely more of a manga person nowadays because the stuff that I read and I would be like, yeah, I would love this to be animated, like sunken rock, real. Um, Pluto, which is finally getting an anime, Vagabond, you know, and I wish Berserk would get a proper animation. The only one that's been really good is Vinland Saga. I 
I feel like Berserk really at this point should have a proper adaptation from some studio. It, it definitely should. Uh, I mean, or at minimum, get like the One Piece treatment. For the most part, it would be okay because <laughs> that's how I feel with One Piece. It it's slow, but it adapts to the source material relatively faithfully for the most part. Ex exactly. I feel like Berserk now, especially more than ever, it needs a proper animation and i would even be fine if it was handled somewhat like psychopaths if you've seen that it's on my watch list okay so with, with psychopaths it has like two season two to three seasons and then the rest of the story is broken up into movies and there's a new movie coming out this year and i feel like the pacing with that and how it works it would work very well for berserk which the slow episodes are slow. It focuses on maybe one to two characters and it'll tell their story there, which is already like great for Berserk because Berserk is a story that, yes, there are a lot of characters in there, but it's mainly focused around three. Guts, Griffith, and Casca. And that type of aesthetic, even if it's just like maybe one full season and then you break the rest of it up into animated movies, but you make sure that they like flow all together pretty seamlessly it would be a very good thing and i i think now the anime community would be okay with that especially seeing as how well uh spider-verse has done and it's just one timeline but can be broken up into separate movies and people you know they might not like it at first but when it all comes together they say yes this was a good decision here i think the hard part for me is like uh, I guess we, we should talk about multiverse fatigue a little bit that's been going on with okay. the yeah. American movies. Like, when is the point where you kind of just want to watch something just to watch something and not like have to watch like five other things to get encompassed into a story at this point? Like, that's, yeah. Like, I get it if the movies can tie into each other. Like, that that's cool, but... At the same time, it's like something like Joker, right? That's a good example. The Joker doesn't tie into anything. Stand alone. Watch it. It's just a good movie. That is something good. And I think the MCU after Endgame has really just needed to take a break. It needed to take a break. And then because the whole story that they were telling with the original Avengers, that is over completely it ended with uh iron man's death and captain america retiring and they should have just took a break from that said hey we're gonna take about two to three years off from this but we're gonna be working on stuff in the background that would have given people enough time to miss it and then when it came back it would have done so much better I, I honestly believe that because it would have gave them time to actually take their time and not rush all these movies out and I think that's the the biggest part here is they're rushing people to get these scripts done they're rushing the VFX teams nothing is polished anymore because they are thinking like just pump out content let's keep this going we're, we're going hot but what they're doing is they're fatiguing everybody because you're not getting anything quality. And I think Thor Love and Thunder was a perfect example of that. I think the funny thing is I actually like the movie. <laughs> Even though a lot oh, of people man. don't like it. Well, it's the same thing with Multiverse of Madness. I also like that one. Multiverse of Madness, I liked. I will, I will die on that hill. Like... The issue of Multiverse of Madness is Sam Raimi just does a lot of weird stuff that people won't expect for a Marvel movie. Well, That's just what he did. What works so well for that movie, I believe, is Sam Raimi's um, implementing horror shots. Uh, like, Because he's a horror movie director, first, uh, first most. He even did that with uh, Spider-Man when he was directing those movies. And it works. It works very well. It gives you a heightened sense of dread... And it really ties all the emotions together. But a lot of people don't like that in their Marvel movies because they haven't been accustomed to that. Because they've stuck so close to a formula 
that when everybody goes a little bit outside of it, it's like deemed as weird and not really feeling like a Marvel movie. And I think that's why I enjoyed Multiverse of Madness a lot more. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Uh, I think when I fell out of Marvel initially was when uh, Eternals and Shang-Chi, when those came out, I kind of just quit watching stuff. Then I tried to come back with uh, Multiverse of Madness. Then there was Guardians 3 also and Thor. It's like, it's kind of tricky because when you have... With the Thor one, I was a bit mixed for part of it. Like, I will say that there's some stuff that didn't work, but overall I thought it was fine. I think that's maybe what's occurring. Like, it's stuff that's good, but doesn't go up to where we had peaks earlier, possibly, is what's going on. Right, and I honestly feel like that's also due to them killing off their villains. Because they don't have any good villains that can be just as fleshed out as they're heroes you know it's like every movie ends with the villain dying or just not being a thing anymore i will say that is one problem uh, the mcu has had because it doesn't allow time for a villain to flesh out like even with like thanos he has like two movies and we have rough implications of who he is from end screenshots that's not a whole lot to work with. The only reason that I felt he was good is the motivation he kind of represented and how the dialogue they kind of gave him. But if you weren't a fan of Marvel previously and you missed a lot of stuff, I can get why people want to understand his character is one thing. Honestly, the best Marvel villain, I think, probably is, for me anyway, it's a tie up between Abomination since he was one of the very few that didn't actually die, and Obadiah Stane from the first Iron Man movie. Those two were probably, like, the best villains. I feel like the best one for me, like, out of everybody, is Loki. Because while he isn't outright as evil, per se, he is really good at what he does, basically, when he's on screen. Like, right. Gives him a more mysterious factor, like Thor one. That's what they started to lead into. It's like, oh, there's a bigger reel. But then afterwards, they make it. You know, it was like the audience person question things, like, will he betray Thor? Like, what is he gonna do, <laughs> and stuff like that. He, he's like the Magneto from the Fox X Men movies, which is a good thing. I mentioned that. It that is kind of true. Yeah, but, you know, I'm just, I'm hoping they do the X-Men right whenever they bring them in, because the only new Marvel movies I've seen after Endgame were Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, and me and my wife couldn't even make it through Thor. And that sucks, because Thor's, his comic version is, like, probably one of my favorite Marvel characters. I think... The issue I had with Thor for that one was mostly tone clashing, because other than that, Absolutely. I thought it was fine. Absolutely. I didn't like the design for gore um, or the tone clash, because the movie was supposed to be like a serious take, right? With, you know, you could have some slight comedy thrown in here and there. Have you seen the deleted scene from um, Zeus and Thor? No, I hadn't seen it. Okay, yeah, so the deleted scene is way better than the scene we actually got. Because it would have made Zeus... He, he would have been flushed out a little bit more. And I, I don't really want to spoil it for you until you can uh, see it for yourself. But yeah, it's, it's way better than what we got. I think uh, from how I felt about it it felt like it was wanting to be a guardians of the galaxy movie but also the dark knight <laughs> as the others have right the right and Which... it just didn't work with what they're trying to show no 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 which 
we, we've seen what happens when you take a character that route and you try to do that clash because it didn't work in the older batman movies either like before christopher nolan's like it didn't work with those type of clashing tones in those movies either so why would it work now well i think the clashing tones for me would be returns i think the original like 98 was the best one right <laughs> joker it, like he can jack nicholson made around. that movie like, well, I think he was also affected around the times. So like, you can still tell it's a bit oh. made, but I think the important thing is, like, when you're using a character like a Joker, for instance, he can do stuff that doesn't feel as normal, because that's the part of him that's scary. He's just doing some weird stuff. <laughs> right, I mean, even his own backstory is like, I'd rather it be multiple choice, and he tells a different version to everybody else. Like in Batman the Animated Series. And, you know, that's just who he is. And that's why people really like him. It's because he can do all this crazy stuff and never be constant. Because he's never been constant in the first place. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. I did want ask you what do you think of the fox universe after it's ended officially here <laughs> in retrospective in retrospective i think it was actually not as bad as people were thinking it, it was um even going back and watching the old x-men movie i really like them and i guess that's just the big x-men fan emmy the only thing i can say is i didn't like some of them like uh, Wolverine Origins, absolutely hated the last. That one's terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, but I appreciated what they did with Sabretooth. I mean, they did some good stuff, I guess. It has some. It's like it has little, just little tiny bright spots, and like just that makes, the absolute. Yeah, that's what I would say. Worst. Yeah, it has some bright spots, and Sabretooth was definitely one of them for me because. He felt at least more like Sabretooth than the Sabretooth did in the first X-Men movie where he just stood there, got zapped by Storm, and basically fell off the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> like, Fox was going in a downward spiral with the solo Wolverine movies, but then they brought it back with First Class. I felt like that was a strong, strong uprise for them but sadly it, it, they couldn't keep that going they couldn't keep the momentum going with dark phoenix and all of that catastrophe uh, apocalypse because they're all supposed to be like you know same just younger versions of the characters we already know and it just doesn't make sense as to why they would constantly still be struggling like that like they do in the first movies, if they've already faced down Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah I would say, for me, I like X-Men 1 through 3, Last Stand, and after that, it kind of gets into a mixed bag. I liked Days of Future Past. That was really good. No, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, technically, four movies. After, I don't like... The Phoenix one, I felt like they handled that arc pretty terribly. Absolutely terribly. And Armageddon just wasn't handled good. Like, no. Say. No. Age of Apocalypse was just terrible. Age, Age of Apocalypse, that's what I meant. I thought it was called Armageddon for some reason. Uh, no, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, though, but yeah. I'm getting... I got franchises confused there. I, I will say First Class was fine, the first one. I think yeah, afterwards first words they should have not done anymore. No, no. First class was really good. Um, Logan, I'm kind of, I'm kind of mixed on Logan. I want to watch it some point, but it's like, I don't know. I, I just really have to commit sometimes. I guess this is the thing with me. Yeah, which I'm just hoping the X Men when they are introduced. 
I just hope they're done right. And treated with care. I just hope they don't get Fantastic Four, because it's funny, the first two movies I think are pretty good. Then, it, yes. then you have four stick, <laughs> which was unwatchable in my opinion. Like I like the first two original Fantastic Four movies, but after that they should not have made another one. I mean, they could have done a third one with the same cast. They should have not tried to reboot it. Right. Um, I will say, I do want the actor who plays... Um, Billy Butcher and the boys to be like Wolverine because I feel like he'd do a great job. Honestly, that wouldn't be a bad casting choice to go with. Yeah. That and if we could get Henry Cavill as Cyclops, I feel like that'd be really good. Honestly, Henry Cavill should look into joining Marvels. Like, he has yeah. to play like an older character might only get a couple movies, I feel like he still has time. Like, I get a bit why James Gunn's doing what he's doing because he's trying to do a full reset for DC, which kind of needs it. So Yeah, I, I, have my, I have my own theory about Henry Cavill's not done with Superman yet. I feel like there was a deal made. It's just under NDA. And I think Henry Cavill will come back as Superman in the future just not gonna be the same superman we know i do have a theory with that a little bit oh let's hear it but i think what the what they might want to do to finish off his story is surprisingly enough do death of superman because you have apocalypse not apocalypse no the the planet is apocalypse no no dark side no, i'm talking about, yeah you have a way to do a new version of that story, I feel like, is yeah. my thing. My thing is, I think they're going to do a Convergence movie. And every Superman actor that's ever been Superman will appear in one movie. And you could have um, Henry Cavill go and... Um, he be one of the Superman that volunteers. He could go back and do the Crisis on Infinite Earths event, and I feel like he could save a version of Supergirl, and that would be a good way on ending his story. It's like he saved the entire multiverse, and that would be a good way to do his character justice. You know, one funny thing they could do is do a crisis event, but also combine the button, since technically we do have a Watchmen movie. Oh, dude, there's <laughs> a... Just use that universe. No, no, Watchmen's actually getting some love next year because we're getting an animated Watchmen movie. Oh, really? I'm excited for that then. That's and uh, Justice League, uh, I think it's Infinite Crisis? Crisis on Infinite Earths? is getting an animated movie as well. It's one of those two. They're both coming out next year. I am excited. Uh, Invincible is coming back, it seems like. Uh, we yes. have the Adam and Eve special, and we got like four episodes for season two this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. The trailer that was shown off uh, San Diego Comic-Con was really good. It has me really excited for it. And uh, speaking of in Invincible, Omni Man in Mortal Kombat One, that I did I did not expect that to happen. I was also surprised uh, the original voice actor was reprising his role. Yeah, that. J.K. Simmons is coming back to to play that. Like that's kind of crazy. Like I couldn't imagine him like voicing like a character for a video game, but I guess he just really likes uh, playing Omni Man. I guess. Oh yeah, like you can tell J.K. Simmons has a lot of fun with Omni Man. Like he I have a feeling he just likes playing characters that are a massive a-hole. <laughs> Don't get assumptions with them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, some of his best parts have been characters where they just don't care. You know, one fun thing I kind of want is like uh, have like John Wick versus different things. I feel like that could be a fun franchise thing to deal with. Oh, that would, that would actually be pretty fun as well. Like, imagine, like, a Predator movie, but John Wick sent in to stop it, basically. Yeah, yeah, that'd be crazy. Just crazy enough to where it could be believable. It's like, yeah, we believe you're experienced enough, and you're the only person who can do this, apparently. I mean, if all it would have to take is just be a prequel movie. Like, before John Wick 1, even. Where he's part of the family and like they, predators killing off some of the business partners and then he, you know, he gets the card and it's just like, predator. Uh, that's that's his target. Just have a rival faction. <laughs> like yeah, we found an alien. <laughs> We're gonna use this. Like, thing. like kill it and we want to study this, its weaponry. You know. Then John Wick realized, like, oh, this alien has a family. I need to <laughs> change my ways or some, some, some way for that then, because that, that would oh, be funny. Man. No, I just, I just feel like that would be funny, because you could tie it in, like, the guy he killed with the pencil is just this crazy dude that's spouting out, like, he's seen the Predators before, and it's just like, that's just how it happened. Yeah, you see, it's stuff like this that I think uh, Hollywood doesn't come up with. Because when I think about the recent like acting writer strike, like one thing someone brought up to me, it's like if someone feels like they're not being like uh, paid well enough to do what they're doing, it, it makes sense why the recent stuff we've probably been getting hasn't been as great because they're not trying them as much as they should. Oh, absolutely. With me, with like uh, content creators, there's just a massive grind, and it feels like depending who you're watching, usually they're trying to improve and get better as time goes on. Oh man, let me tell you, I just spent like most of my day today editing together uh, the first one. If I ever did it, I'm just like, man, I have improved so much from this, and it's just it's inspired me to improve more now because i know later on i'm gonna do this again and be like oh brother but it also showed me like even now what's missing from some of my stories that i had back then that's why people started watching me and uh, it's just it's been a good experience and cut out the you know parody uh element of that because uh, the at plus scene that i did in there which it's always been for parody effect, just to be a tension breaker from all the dark stuff I did. But now I just you know, cut that out. Cut that out. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> one thing that I, I try at least do on my own end as well. Yeah, because if you're not improving and you're just complacent, eventually it's going to catch up to you. Eventually it will. Oh yeah, for sure. Because I've seen a lot of people who have had a lot of good traction. They just are always complacent. They don't try new. They either don't try another series that could get uh, new viewers and have something else in their bag, so that way it doesn't give them as much burnout. And I mean, even with what I'm doing, because I'm. Uh, doing my first actual Naruto, what if I have the intention to finish completely? Um, but I'm recycling an idea. Like, what if I did what if Deku was reptile a long time ago? This time I'm doing what if Naruto was reptile, just because I'm in a huge Mortal Kombat mood. But it's something that's fresh because it's a different character, different story, and I'm able to take what I did with Deku's reptile, the things that I liked, but I'm able to do them better now
I did want to ask something interesting that's going on. So, with Netflix's live action adaptation for One Piece looking as good as it is, do you think there's a chance like it might become mainstream and we'll have a really like large resurgence again for people getting the anime again? One Piece is in an interesting situation. Uh, because August you have the reveal of Gear 5th and then you have the live action so One Piece is doing a lot of the work that and it's the hype alone will draw people in and it may be a resurgence for it but we we only have seen bits and pieces of the live action my concern is how is it actually going to go when it's fully released because it's easy to pick the highlights and put that in a trailer and have that go and people think oh man this looks really good you know it's like when we saw William Defoe as Ryuk in the Death Note stuff like that looked pretty good the movie on the other hand heart gob- heart garbage like just terrible I am um, besides his character <laughs> Right, right. Besides which is the Ryu, funny thing. which was the, the the best part of that movie, but that's just where I'm I'm getting at. And it's like I wait to see the final product before I can give any kind of um, an inkling as to what this could do or what it won't do. But I mean. If it does, if the live action does flop, I mean, it's probably just going to have a lot of people being like, this is why the anime is better. And that might actually take people more toward the anime who watched the live action and liked it. They might go to the anime and say, oh, well, maybe this is better. You know. You see, that's why I kind of hope with Cowboy Bebop, because I always felt like that could get like a remake considering how old it is at this point. Like it's at that time it could get it. I mean, Ronin Kenshin's getting a remake this year. I, it's not good, though. <sighs> like, legit. I'm, I'm optimistic about this, man. And I'm not sure if I want to have the creator get any royalties, either. <laughs> uh... I think that's actually going to the, the studio. Uh... I hope, anyway. But I would like to see you, Hakusho, get get like a hunter hunter uh 2011 treatment i think you you could use that for sure especially with how well like chainsaw man jj shit is doing like it could fit in oh that man. time period yeah the only issue i have with the chainsaw man anime is it's not continuous it's a seasonal deal that's my only complaint so i get that but at the same time it's like oh i so get it jjk as well <laughs> yeah that boat but JJK is like a lo- way longer, way, way longer. And the original Chainsaw Man story is only 11 volumes. I, I mean, I'm sure they're going to adapt part two. Like, how did oh, Jojo happen? definitely, definitely. Right. And that that's just my deal with it. It's just like, at least at minimum, I hope they just finish the first part. So people will continue I've, with the manga or something. It's honestly funny because Chainsaw Man is already confirmed to get a season two, but it's also getting a movie. You see, that's the interesting thing. It's like, where are they going to adapt into the movie? I I have a feeling it might be similar to the Black Clover movie that came out, which is just its own little side story, which I'd be happy. But what I think they might do is because um, we also have a new Chainsaw Man manga coming out. And it's like the buddy stories between Denji and Power. A movie with those two as the focal points, I would be more than happy with. Because I love Denji and Power's dynamic together. I think that would work because it could be like a buddy cop type of movie. Exactly. If they did that way. So I could see that be fine. It, exactly. Because Chainsaw Man is what actually like really brought me back to watch anime. That and Bleach. Because I was... I was not making time to watch very many anime, but Chainsaw Man, it, I, I have, I have fell in love with Chainsaw Man completely. It's my favorite shonen by far. 
Yeah, that's that's a lot to take in for sure. But hey, uh, but back on the topic of animes that deserve yeah. a, a re a redo, D Gray Man. D Gray Man needs one. I think that's also on my watch list from what I remember. Yeah. I oh think it is. yeah, dude. No. Favorite anime character of all time out of any series, Alan Walker from D Gray Man. He is the best protagonist, in my opinion, that Shonen has ever made. And you know, one thing that I would want is to have. Uh, I kind of want uh, a Pokemon, but told from like each of the games because Origins worked pretty well. I just surprised they didn't continue that trend. Oh, definitely. I would I would love it if Pokemon uh, that anime is uh, focused on their pr- game protagonist. Because the thing is, like, sure, later on it would be more similar to the anime, you know, but it's like there's just so much potential there. <laughs> It, at least before X and Y, I felt like everything could have been pretty good. Like, maybe in like a movie adaptation, that might be possible. Yeah, because they don't need skip to... skip some of the lower gems, I feel like. Oh, yeah, like, just uh, have that be, like, you showcase one, and then it's just, like, skipping ahead. A movie would definitely do a lot better, I believe, because I don't think a whole lot of people will really want to sit through a full anime like episode by episode with the game protagonist but movies that's easy to do and it's easy to get a good uh feel for how well it will do well i think the issues like the player character there is a whole lot of dialogue to kind of work with them so doing like a movie probably would be better now that I think about it. Yeah. Pokemon's been doing really good, though. Yeah, I think uh, Ash's story's completely over at this point, so I'm curious where that's gonna go on from now on. I'm actually really happy they finally retired Ash. I mean, here's the thing. Like, someone brought this up to me earlier. It's impossible to watch Pokemon from beginning to end like at the moment like you're born because <laughs> how if you're watching it beginning to end not skipping anything it's humanly impossible and that's crazy to think about it is because i mean it's like, been going me, on forever media, that's to me when media is getting too far at a point where it's not humanly possible to watch anymore yeah because and that even goes on with One Piece. I mean, a lot of people get turned off by it just because of how long it is. I mean, same thing with Detective Conan. The thing with uh, Conan, for example, Conan's episodic. If you don't like an episode you're currently watching, you can skip it because it's not con- yeah. connected. I mean, same thing with uh, with Gintoki, uh, Gintama, for the most part, anyways. Also, loop on the third uh, parts one through three you can do the same thing for the most part. Yeah, but loop loop on is just amazing. Oh yeah, I'm hoping uh, uh, Otakon actually uh, Discotex Hack Panel. I hope they announce new uh, English dub stuff. But I still have the Cat's Eye movie to watch though. So... There's no dub for Cat's Eye. I learned that a while back. It's like, so it's like, am I just going to watch it without context? Like, I might. I'm I'm still waiting for Uzumaki's anime. I thought it was announced a long time ago. It was. It just hasn't come out. Really? Yeah, it's been, it's... Stuck, it's been stuck in development hell. Cause, uh, it's supposed to be like a Toonami original. I mean, that could be why, probably. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely because of that, but I think Toonami's doing a good thing because the Shonen anime licensing to put on Toonami, it is absolutely horrendous with how expensive it is. They couldn't afford the Demon Slayer uh, movie, I believe. 
and that's why it wasn't on Toonami. But uh, so I think what they're trying to do is go for more um, obscure mangas and bankroll an anime uh, being in production for that, which is a solid idea because I mean it gets more anime out there because the popular shonens are going to get made regardless. I think the fun thing with uh, Toonami is like I think. Almost all the parts for Lupin have aired there, besides the rest of Part 2, because it didn't fully get dubbed. I think yeah. Part 3. But everything else was on there, for the most part. Besides the movies, especially, which is fine. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, Did you see, uh, Toonami also announced they're doing Lazarus, which is done by the director of John Wick? For uh, who's on there? No, I actually have never even heard of Lazarus. Yeah, that's. I would recommend you checking out after here. That totally okay. worth your time. Yeah, something that's on my watch list is uh, Primal. I've heard really good things about Primal, so I'm definitely curious to check that out. I went to check out, uh, done by Gandhi as well, uh, Last Unicorn. What I think it's what's called. It's a longer name than that, but it's like uh, a bunch of superheroes who are reincarnated into other regular people. They're from different times, and there's some event going on. That's all I remember. Oh, man. Yeah. Now, I, meanwhile, I'm over here just waiting for the Suicide Squad Isekai anime. You see, that's the one I'm more mixed about. <laughs> In all honesty, it's like... Uh... As, as someone who's actually, like, read comic book uh characters is get translated into a manga like spider-man finally got a he got a manga and it's called spider-man fake red it is one of the best spider-man stories i have read in many years along with wolverine snicked it's so also a is, manga. Uh, spider-man had one before that and i believe batman had had a couple of mangas but i don't know if any of them were good from what i remember I know Deadpool got like two volumes and they were really good. I I mean it's Deadpool. Of course he can be adapted fine <laughs> in that genre, I feel like. I mean, even Disney characters are getting their own manga now. Stitch got a manga. I think even Nightmare Before Christmas is getting a manga. Oh really? I think so. And I feel like they should do that with more characters. Um, but no, the Batman ones, uh, they actually animated that into like, uh, I think it was like one of those were animated movies where it's like Batman, um, a bunch of kids are telling stories about what they've seen Batman. Uh, See, I saw do. that and I thought that was really good. Yeah, I, I think that's where that was actually inspired from. I watched Batman Ninja. I didn't like that one. No, no, no. I had high hopes for it. It looked really cool. Was the thing? Yeah, it looked cool. And if you were like just wanting to turn your brain off and enjoy something funny, goofy, and just action packed, like it's a good movie for that. But if you're going for storytelling and stuff like that, it ain't good. I feel like Batman works best when there's a mystery element to it. When there's not, it's kind of difficult to get in. You see, Batman works really good well, as a besides detective. Besides Lego Batman. Lego Batman was fine. Well, Lego anything is almost always going to be fine. But Batman's not a character that needs to be thrown up against these impossible odds. Like, he doesn't need to be pitted against, um, like, Superman and everything. Like... The DC uh, animated universe back then where it was like Batman the Animated Series that went into like the Justice League. That was a really good Batman because you had him revealing like he's so human with his uh, time with Ace. Like all these other super powered people were willing to go in there and just like presumably murk the kid. Batman just stayed there and comforted her, showing his just why he was 
the best character on that show. Sitting there, talking to her, keeping her company, and then just, like, having a level of respect for an enemy. And that's where I think Batman does the best. I think the mystery element helps, like, me as a viewer get captivated of how he solves problems. Because in theory, he could fight someone insanely strong and... It's the process of how he concludes to defeat someone that oh, can work, you know. Absolutely, like uh, with Bane or something like that. That was that's a good example. It's because Bane is well beyond Batman in terms of physical strength, and that's just something that I feel like how being more strategic and everything really makes it good on how he can defeat him. Yeah, I think we've gone on for a good time here. Is there anything you want to uh, promote and stuff before we close things off here? Uh, yeah, actually, I've talked to you about this for a while, but um, the uh, big project I am working on, it is actually uh, Mortal Kombat inspired, and I am trying to do this with uh, Explic. Me and him have this deal where we're going to do our own stories on characters with the Mortal Kombat's powers and stuff and at the end of it when we get a good amount of characters we're going to do a series on where there is an interdimensional tournament being held and we let people we put up polls on community tabs on matchups from characters he's done characters i've done and see who people would prefer to win like a voting deal and we just see if we can make that work and that's something I'm really excited about. And the Persona, what if I'm doing Persona 5 with the previous protagonists, it's probably the most ambitious thing I'm doing because I have gone out and gotten like official character renders, the backgrounds, the text boxes, um, the music, everything. Like I have a, a folder that's almost a thousand uh, items full and it's just with like... Um, just assets for me to do out of transitions and everything and getting art drawn up for uh, characters palaces look stuff like that and I'm also having uh, people help me out with lending their voices to the project so it's something that I'm trying to put out and I want to have it done by uh, January and then the last project I'm working on is my last MHA what if like my last Deku what if and I'm wanting that to be interactive. And what I mean by that is I have four different paths that Deku can go down. They all start the same way, but depending on what you want to see, of course, with time stamps and everything, it goes down different paths. And I'm just excited for that. And after that, no more Deku anything. So I'm happy to finally be having that ended. And I'm hoping that to be the Christmas special. That's cool. But yeah, I hope all of you go check that out when that releases, and hopefully we will catch up some other time here, but that, that's all our time here for today. It's been Drew from What If Universe reminding you at What If Universe, there are endless possibilities, and I'll see you in the next one.